Chapter 26 Review You've got one major job in this chapter, which is to know how to do the ABG tests. But you should also understand all of the physiology that underlies these tests, namely how the functions of the lungs and the kidneys relate to maintaining the pH of our body. For the ABG tests, your first step was to determine whether your patient was in acidosis or in alkalosis. Your next step was to determine what's causing this condition. That's where you look to CO2 and bicarb levels. If only one of them is off, then your job is easy. That must be the one causing the problem. But if both of the values are out of the normal range, then one of them is causing the problem and the other one is trying to fix it. In your matching game, you can think of carbon dioxide as being acidic and bicarb as being alkaline. Too much carbon dioxide could cause acidosis, as could not enough bicarb. Conversely, too little carbon dioxide could cause alkalosis, as can too much bicarb. CO2 levels are regulated by the lungs and bicarb by the kidneys. So if our patient is in acidosis, the pH of their blood being below 7.3, and both CO2 levels and bicarb levels are too low, too little CO2 cannot be causing the problem. Only too little bicarb would cause acidosis. So it'll be metabolic acidosis. And our patient's lungs are trying to compensate by breathing faster to expel more CO2. So the lower levels of CO2 that we see in that patient are trying to fix the problem. This is compensation. So altogether we would say compensated metabolic acidosis. The lungs haven't fully compensated, which is why your patient's pH is below 7.3. But it would be even lower if the lungs were not compensating 